that's what product is say. What do you think about it? The thing is, is that just because the product is naturally occurring does not necessarily mean that it's not toxic. And safety is actually a qualitative term, which is you can't really legislate safety. You can regulate whether it has a risk of toxicity or an effect. But what you consider safe and what I consider safe is completely different. And the company is trying to equate naturally occurring products with safety. But in actual fact, if you look at most of the drugs that we have in the marketplace today, 70 to 80 percent of those drugs were originally obtained from natural products. And they have toxicity. They are not necessarily safe. They, they are naturally doesn't mean that it's not a chemical. And a chemical means that you can have some toxicity. Like water is probably Right. I mean, if you, if you drink too much water, you'll dilute the electrolyte. So it, it's still that. And the problem is, is that the companies have used this idea of natural and naturally occurring as making it better <clears throat> than something else, which is or safer. That's not necessarily the case. The thing is, they never, they made a statement about it. They just tell them that it's natural. They, the thing is, they, so they just say, yeah, you know, yeah, it's the way that a company get away from the responsibility they do on. Yeah, and, and, and if you're, if you're talking about, in the case of uh, pyrethroids or these kinds of um, pesticides, Originally, those pesticides were derived from a plant. And those products, which they obtained it from the structure, had a very short half-life. And it actually was very, it was very low toxicity to humans. However, in actual fact, in fish and other organisms, aquatic organisms, it's very toxic. So depending on the mechanism and whether it may be safe to humans, but it may not be safe to the, to the environment. And the other thing is, is that what happens over time is the fact that the companies have modified the pyrethroid structure from the natural curing structure to make it so that it's more long-lived. And one of the reasons why the pyrethroids were not very toxic was because they had a very short half-life. But the companies in modifying the structure have made it so that now the half-lives of this particular pesticide are as long as some of the organochlorines and some of the organophosphates which they were replacing. Mm -hmm. So the problem comes in is that the companies have made these new products and they've made them so that they're longer lasting so that they can use that as a more efficacious where you only have to do one application as opposed to doing it every two to three months. You can do it every six months. Okay. That's what how it in the world. There are no real rules or regulations governing what they can actually say in the ads. In other words, there is no regulation currently for pesticides. Unlike for drugs, where drugs have to meet certain criteria, they have to be efficacious, they have to be effective in what they're doing. And so if you look at the drug ads, you'll see that this drug does this particular thing, but you have to worry about the side effects. That's actually regulated by the Food and Drug Administration. The fungicide, or actually the pesticides, are actually regulated by EPA, and they're governed by a different legislation. And they're governed by FIFRA, which basically looks at fungicides, insecticides, and pesticides. And in that, that requires certain types of testing. But there's no portion of that law which deals with the marketing aspect or what you can say about that particular pesticide. It was never considered that people would really market these kinds of things the way in which we market them now. What it is, is that when you're, I think the, what the marketing people have done is they've got on this bandwagon of equipment.
studying natural and with Satan, even though they don't say it, in, in the way in which the American populace thinks, they think that if it's a naturally occurring product, it can't have any toxicity. But we know that isn't the case. We know that the compound, the active ingredient, is a chemical. Okay? And the thing is, is that there needs to be some standards which are set for what is um, being able to be stated about a pesticide. And just because it's naturally occurring does not mean that it isn't toxic. Mm -hmm. So I personally think that that should not necessarily be a criteria that they can give us. And one of the reasons why the pyrethroids become a real problem is the fact that originally the parent compound had a very short half-life. Now the half-life, what we mean by that is how long it stays within the environment. Mm -hmm. And originally when we really started with the original extract from chrysanthemums, the half-lives were very short. We were literally talking about one to two days. Now we have synthetic pesticides and synthetic pyrethroids, uh, which actually have half-lives of 30 days. So they've now taken a compound which is very short and now made it so that it's very long. And one of the reasons that they do that is because people don't want to necessarily apply this stuff all the time. And the other problem with that is, is that with pesticides which are applied within the home, which the uh, synthetic pyrethroids are, and in schools, the most sensitive population of these compounds are children and or children who are walking, crawling around the carpet, putting this stuff within their mouth, into their from the carpet into their mouth. And so they're having a much longer time of exposure. So that needs to be looked at as well. Mm -hmm. um, it's really uh, what's the truth of them. Yeah. And it's actually modified too. And it's, and it's a modified compound. As soon as they have modified that original structure, I don't believe that they should be able to be used, use the term naturally occurring. Because now you've made a synthetic compound based on a backbone of a naturally occurring compound. And as soon as you've modified that, it is not naturally occurring. So it doesn't fall underneath that classification. Uh, thank you very much.
We use Wisdom GC Granular. The active ingredient is Bifenthrin, a highly effective pyrethroid insecticide that has been used for several years to